Today on our tandem axle trailer, we're going to be installing the new Dexter trailer axle with electric brakes, five on four and a half inch bolt pattern for your wheel, 89 inches long and a 3,500 pound capacity, part number 35545E-ST-89. We'll go ahead and start disassembly. We'll need to remove the dust cap first. I'm going to go ahead and clean off some of the grease so we can get to the keeper pin for the castle nut. The castle nut is what holds the outer hub assembly together on the axle. For this style castle nut, the keeper is a metal tab that's bent over from the washer that is actually secured underneath it. So we'll flatten out the tab of the keeper and then we can remove the nut. Here's our washer that goes between the keeper and the outer bearing. And here's the keeper and the metal tab that we had to straighten in order to get our castle nut off. And then our outer bearing. Once the outer bearing's out of the way, we can go ahead and remove the hub and drum assembly. Next, we'll need to remove the backing plate and brake assembly. The backing plate is secured by four studs that go through the backing plate, through the mounting flange on the axle, and secured with a nut. We're also going to go ahead and disconnect the electric. To do that, I'm going to cut it off here at the connection point. Next, when just removing the axle, we'll then go ahead and cut the U-bolt. To cut the U-bolt, you can use a reciprocating saw, cutoff wheel, or even a torch. Now we've got one side loose, move over to the other side and repeat the same process. Now once we have both hub and drum assemblies removed, we can go ahead and take the axle off and remove it from the trailer. We're now ready to put our axle in place. Here is the manufacturer's tag, and the tag will go to the rear of the trailer. And then line up the spring seat on the axle with the nib that sticks out the top of the leaf spring pack. Once you have them lined up, we'll use the new U-bolt kit to secure it. Our plate will go on the bottom, U-bolt coming down over top of the axle, We'll install our fasteners finger tight at first, then we'll snug them down and torque to specifications as indicated instructions. Now our front axle is our braking axle for this application. So whether you're installing a new brake drum assembly or an old or reused brake drum assembly, it'll go ahead and install the same way. We'll line the studs on the backing plate up with the axle, then install a split lock washer, and nut to secure it. Now, when purchasing a new axle and hub drum assembly, you'll get the new nut and split lock washer to attach the backing plate to the axle. But when reusing an old assembly, we'll go ahead and reuse the old split lock washer and nut. Now, it will make a difference for driver or passenger side. As you can see here, it's labeled for right passenger side. Another way to double check it is to look at the shoe length. The larger shoe, longer from the lining to lining versus the front, the larger shoe will be towards the rear of the trailer and does the majority of the braking. Now we know we got the pasture side on correctly, we'll go ahead and install our hub drum assembly. We've already got our bearings packed and ready to go. We'll install the washer that is supplied with the new axle, then the axle nut. Now there are variations on tightening down the tapered bearing axle nut, which is what we have here for this application. My preference is to tighten it down, make sure we have our bearings installed and seated all the way. Once we know we're tightened down, we'll then back it off to just snug setting the proper preload for our bearings. Then we'll take the axle nut keeper, which is supplied with the axle. It has a flat tab that points to the inside while the rest go around the outside to lock around the nut. That flat tab 
will line up with the flat spot on the axle. There, now once we have the lock in place, we can go ahead and reinstall our dust cap. We'll be using the Redline dust cap driver, which will help to drive the dust cap in straight. Now a final step for reinstalling our hub drum brake assembly is reconnecting the electrical leads. Using our DECA heat shrink butt connectors, go ahead and attach the backing plate to the wiring that runs through the axle tube of our trailer. Now the way the brake system is designed, it doesn't matter which, one, which side is power or ground, as long as they're both connected. Now our heat shrink butt connectors will need to be heated up so that they'll seal around the wire. And that'll complete the install of our new Dexter trailer axle with electric brakes, part number 355. 45E-ST-89.